Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this session, we'll be writing an API for the social media service. So it's going to be a lot of code. So it's going to be fun. So let's get started. The first thing I just want to do is uh, clone the code. So before I do that, I just want to explain a bit about the service we are going to write. So here you can see there are a bunch of resources in the service we are going to write. Those resources are grouped into two categories, users and post. So under users, what we're going to do is we'll first implement this resource. And then in the following session, we'll be implementing these two resources. Rest of the resources will just fill in, or you can just write it on your own. Right, so let's check out the code. Let me go to my VS code and say it clone. And let's check out to the branch level zero, right. Okay, so we are good. On the left-hand side, now we can see uh, the copy code. So now we can start uh, writing our first ballerina service. First thing we can do is we can actually check whether Ballerina is properly installed. Yes, I don't have any issues. So now let's create a new Ballerina project, a new social media service. Right, so you can see on the left-hand side, it has created a new project and there are a bunch of files in it. So I'll get to that in a minute. So let's uh, lay up on the project itself instead of opening the entire thing. All right, so I have opened the new Ballerina project. Here you can see there are two files. If I click on the first one, which is Ballerina.tamal file, you can see uh, a set of information which describes the project, like org name, project name, and the version. So if you want, you can change it, but for now, uh, let's keep it as it is. And then if I click on main.bal, you can see there's a main function in the file. So we don't need this. Let's get rid of that. And maybe we can rename this to a more meaningful name, like social media service. Right. So now if you can't remember the syntax for creating a service, what you can do is you can use the diagram editor to help you get started. Here you can click on components and then the component we want is a service. Right, so let's give a base path for the service. Say, to show media. So it's not happy because there's a dash. You can uh, fix that by escaping it. And then I'm okay with port 9090. So let's save this. And on the left hand side, you can see the code is generated for you. So I'll just close this. So as you can see, diagram editor is good to get you started. But you know, once you are familiar with ballerina code, you can simply just write the code instead of using the diagram editor. Right. So here, if you look at the generated code, you can see uh, it has generated a service. And that service has a base part called social media and it runs on port 99. Inside that we have a resource function. So this resource function has two parts. So one thing is the accessor. We, so we call it the accessor, it can be anything. So in this context, it is basically HTTP verbs like get, post, post, like that. And then the second part is the URL part. So here you can say for uh, something like that. And then for the return value also, you can give some value, maybe for. So in our case, what we want is to return users. So we'll name it as users. And then here we can have an array of users or or just an array, I mean, uh, just an error. 
so um, so this is our uh, resource. So I'm just using Copilot, so it will suggest thing. Uh, ignore that for a second. Uh, if you look at this uh, resource, what it basically says is that this resource can be uniquely identified and located using the URL path social media users and this resource is only accessible using the verb get and if you check the return part of this users resource function there are two possibilities either you can return user array or you can just return an error so if I explain this in terms of HTTP, when you return a user array, what happens is that it becomes a 200 OK response with the content type application JSON and the body will be a JSON array. If you return an error, it will be 500 internet server error and the body will be the error message. So let's try that out and see. So first thing I need to do is I just need to define a user. So let's create a new user and say in ID then string name time date let's say per Date and then we can say string compile now. Right, let's import this time module. Okay, all good. So let's just create a fake uh, user. Let's say Joe and then. Uh, For the ID, let's say one, and then name. Yes, let's say Joe. And then for birth date, uh, we can say, I just put some year. Something like this. And then uh, we just need to fill in one last thing. And that is a mobile number. Right, so that is done. So then we can return this value in an array like this. Right, all good. So let's start the service. Let's give it a moment. All right, the service is started. To try out the service, you can just click on Try. So here you can see uh, this is uh, this is a Swagger editor. So if you are familiar with Swagger editor, this is basically the same thing. And here, if you just see the resource, you can see it basically says the same thing. Like you can get a 200 OK response with this JSON payload, or you can get a 500 internal server response. Those are the two possible responses. Let's try it out. Let's just execute this. And if you check the response body, you actually get what we have mentioned here. Right, so that's about it. So that's all I wanted to discuss in this uh, uh, video. See you in the next one.